Mention was made of the biblical theory that Negroes became black because Noah, supposedly white, cursed the sons of Ham. Now that was a, he knows that, that J. Rogers, the writer of this, knows that was BS that the white man created. So-called Jewish people came up with that garbage. And I got a book that explains it too. But go ahead. But the earliest Jews were in all probability Negroes. That's how you know. He knows that the real Jews are black. Go ahead. Abraham, their ancestor, is said to have come from Chaldea, and the ancient Chaldeans were black. Mm -hmm. the, the, <laughs> go ahead. The Chaldees, says Higgins, were originally Negroes. As was said, too, relics of prehistoric Negroes have been discovered in this region. It is even possible that the Jews originated not in Asia, but in Africa. Because in Africa, Northeast Africa is the land of Canaan. Go ahead. Gerald Massey has advanced considerable argument in proof of that theory. Whatever was the original color of the Jews, they lived for more than four centuries among the Negroid Egyptians. Next highlight. Only 70 Jews went to Egypt, but according to the Bible, 600,000 men left it, which must have meant an additional two or three million women and children. Since the Jews were slaves, their women were undoubtedly concubines of the Egyptians and must have produced mixed offspring. After more than three centuries of slavery, almost every trace of the first 70 Jews must have been lost, together with their culture. Thus, Jewish culture was Egyptian culture. For instance, the Egyptians did not eat pork and still do not eat it. To get an idea, to get an idea what must have happened to only those 70 Jews, think of what has happened to Negroes in the United States mm -hmm. who came in. Think about the American Negro, go ahead. Who came in hundreds of thousands over a period of centuries and not all at once. And not all at once as the Jews did in Egypt. The Negroes are so Americanized that the Negroes are so Americanized that were it not for their color, one would forget that they ever came from Africa. You hear that? Because we we be our people be acting like Esau, and we our people is crazy over here. Yeah. Our people is crazy. Um give me I want to part um, where it's, where in, this, in Genesis where it says the Egyptians did not sit with the Hebrews. I want that one. And we're going to come back to this book in a moment. Anybody know what that is? Because it just popped in my head. When Joseph went to sit down and eat. Come on. Just popped in my head. Mm, bear with me. Where is it? 40, Genesis chapter 43, verse, verse 32. 32. Okay, read that. And they set on for him by himself. Talking about Joseph, go ahead. And for them by themselves, and for the Egyptians which did eat with him by themselves, because the Egyptians might not eat bread with, he, with the Hebrews. For that is an abomination to the Egyptians. So now when you look at that verse, it lets you know that although there may have been some intermingling, a lot of them, a lot of the Egyptians did not intermingle with us. You had some. There's examples of that. I believe it was Deuteronomy about an Israelitish woman who had a son. But that verse is letting you know it was an abomination for them to really deal with us in that context. Everybody with me so far? Yes, sir. All right. So now, from there, let's go back to the book with the crazy Americanized Negro. With the highlight issue. Yeah. Moses himself was black. So the scholars know Moses himself was black. Go ahead. In all likelihood, he was the son of Pharaoh's own daughter. He was, remember, they adopted him. Go ahead. Which would account for his adoption and rearing for the throne. All right. Uh, give me the next page. Right. Zoom in. The entire Semitic and Hamitic population of Africa has a mulatto character which extends to the Semites outside of Africa. Okay, so you had the Semites. Also, jump down to the next highlight, just for time's sake. Yes, sir. Every kind of intermingling has taken place between the original groups of the Negro, Hamitic, and Semitic people. So I wanted to get to that part right there, because there did come a time when we did mix with the Hamites. Like, for example, Jacob had how many wives? He had two wives. Y'all messing me up now. Was that Detroit yelling out the wrong answers? Yes. He had two wives, and there was other concubines. And those were Hamites, right? And we, Jacob had kids with them. Everybody with, with, with me, right? Yes, All right, thank God, 
Read on. <laughs> in the Sudan, Upper Egypt, and North Africa, there are Jews whose color and features are indistinguishable from Negroes. Right. Go ahead. The Jews outside Africa retain large numbers of them, their Negroid traits. All right. So what happened to Egypt? Whatever happened to Egypt? Let's go to Ezekiel 29. Let's get a little bit of history on Egypt. Ezekiel, the 29th chapter. What verse, Bishop? We're going to start when I get it. How about that? Ezekiel 29, verse 8. Ezekiel, chapter 29, and verse 8. Mm -hmm. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will bring a sword upon thee, and cut off man and beast out of thee. And the land of Egypt shall be desolate and waste. So that's what we want to highlight. And the land of Egypt shall be desolate and waste. Go ahead. And they shall know that I am the Lord, mm -hmm. because he has said, the river is mine, and I have made it. So Egypt had the philosophy. They had those false gods. They said the Nile is theirs. The Egyptians made the Nile. That was all blasphemy against the Most High. Go ahead. Behold, therefore I am against thee and against thy rivers, and I will make the land of Egypt utterly waste and mm. desolate. That's right. Come on. From the tower of Syene, even unto the border of Ethiopia. Now watch this. Put the map next map up. All right. So now read that verse again, verse 10. Verse 10, Behold, therefore I am against thee, and against thy rivers, and I will make the land of Egypt utterly waste and desolate, from the tower of Syene, even unto the border of Ethiopia. God is letting you know that Egypt extended from uh, right, right there where it says Cairo, all the way down to the border of Ethiopia. But the maps don't show that. You're, the maps all say Egypt is way up there. Then you got to Sudan, and then you got Ethiopia. The Bible's letting us know that Egypt encompassed what land in addition? The Sudan. Egypt, that was Egypt, that whole area. These new lines, Esau put all these lines in, but the Bible gives you the maps on how to read it again. Read it again. Yes, sir. Verse 10. Behold, therefore I am against thee and against thy rivers, and I will make the land of Egypt utterly waste and desolate. From the tower of Syene, even unto the border of Ethiopia. Even to the border of Ethiopia. So the tower of Syene was in Migdal, okay? That's in the area of uh, Sudan, between Egypt and Sudan. So it lets you know that Egypt was larger than what Esau's little maps show you, all right? So now, that was verse 10, Big Red? That yes, was sir. verse 10? Verse so 10. now, we're going to read down to verse 16. Go ahead. Verse 11. No foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast shall pass through it. Neither shall it be inhabited 40 years. So now Ezekiel was prophesying about Nebuchadnezzar, the Cushite, who would come through and destroy Egypt. For 40 years it would be desolate. Go ahead. And I will make the land of Egypt desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate. And the cities among the cities that are laid waste shall be desolate 40 years. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and will disperse them through the countries. Yet thus saith the Lord God, at the end of 40 years will I gather the Egyptians from the people, whither they were scattered. And I will bring again the captivity of Egypt, and will cause them to return into the land of Pathros, into the land of their habitation, and they shall be there a base kingdom. So God says when the Egyptians return, the real Egyptians, they shall be there a base kingdom. Base meaning a low people. Go ahead. It shall be the basis of all the kingdoms. Because remember, think about it. Egypt was a world superpower. God says, mm -mm, I'm going to make that now. A base kingdom. Go ahead. It shall be the basis of the kingdoms. Neither shall it exalt itself any more above the nations. For I will diminish them, that they shall no more rule over the nations. Uh-huh. So now, read on. Verse 16. And it shall be no more the confidence of the house of Israel. And it shall be no more the confidence of the house of Israel. Because we like, later on during this time period, when Ezekiel's prophet signed, we like to make an allegiance with the Egyptians. Read again, verse 16. Yes, sir. And it shall be no more the confidence of the house of Israel, which bringeth their iniquity to remembrance. So now when you look at this map, Egypt today is filled with who? Arabs. Who's, and when you, somebody yelled out Esau. Mm, well, some of them up in there, but a lot of Arabs. Uh, from the Sudan, the Sudan, which is also Egypt, according to the Bible, you have the Dinka. Anybody know, heard of the Dinka? That's, they're like in South Sudan, okay? And they're very 
tall. I think them and the Watusi are the one, two of the tallest groups out there. So read verse 16 for me again. Verse 16. So no, read 15. Verse 15. It shall be the basis of the kingdoms. Neither shall it exalt itself any more above the nations. For I will diminish them, that they shall no more rule over the nations. And it shall be no more the confidence of the house of Israel. Some, can somebody tell a comedic community that? Go ahead. And it shall be no more the confidence of the house of Israel, which bringeth their iniquity to remembrance, when they shall look after them. But they shall know that I am the Lord You're going to know the Lord did that, because he took uh, the ancient Egyptians down from a world superpower to the basis kingdom. So the Egyptians are the Sudanese, the Dinka that dwell in Sudan down towards the southern part. That's the ancient Egyptians. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is you. And finally, my brethren, be strong.